just whatever tips and advice and just words of encouragement that you guys have, um, the floor is yours. And if I talk too much, I'll probably end up crying. So <laughs> <laughs> you want to start? You want me to start? Well, it starts with you, Q. It starts with me. Um, so hi, everybody. I'm Q. Um, I'll just go a little bit over quickly how we found Thrive. So I was the head team mom at a football, um, the football recreation out here. And my son's team went to a tournament in Florida and all of the players could not go. So we had to recruit other players from other teams at our park. And so long story short, we recruited a couple of um, kids and one of the moms and I clicked. We found out that we moved out here to Georgia at the same time. She was from California. I'm from Jersey. We moved here at the same time, the same year, the same summer, the same month. And we lived right across the street from each other in um, subdivisions. And um, neither one of us had family here. So we had decided on that trip that we were gonna do Christmas together. And so she came over and she had on the DFT and I'm a nosy person. So I asked her what it was and she said, Thrive, you want to try it? And I was like, uh, sure. And let me just tell you another thing. I, I'll try anything. Like, I'm just like, oh yeah, I'll try it. Yeah, why not? Let me just make sure it's not going to kill me. And yeah, give it to me. I'll take it. And so when she, and she was a nurse. So I was like, she's not going to give me anything that's bad for me. And so she was like, Thrive, you want to try it? And I was like, sure, what is it? And she was like, energy. And I was like, oh, oh yeah, I'll try it. Um, at the time, um, not only was I the head team mom at the football field, I was on the PTA. I worked a full-time job at a very busy doctor's office. Um, I ran the front desk. And so I would wake up in the morning. I would throw back a five-hour energy. I would start getting ready for work. I'd flick on the lights in my kids' rooms. I'd be screaming at them to hurry up and get up because they were making me late. I'd go back in. I'd get ready. I'd get them off to the bus. We were always that family that was like running after the bus on the way out of our cul-de-sac, like catching the bus. The kids are getting yelled at by the bus driver because we crossed the street to catch the bus. Um, I'd head to work and whether I was late or not, I stopped for coffee because if they wanted me to be nice, I had to have my coffee. And so I would have my coffee on my lunch break. I would run down to the gas station, grab two Red Bulls, throw one in the fridge, then go back to my car and take a 20 minute nap. Um, I throw back that Red Bull after my nap. And then I'd head back to work, finish up my afternoon at work, go pick up the kids from aftercare, walk in the door, set a 20 minute timer on my microwave, take another 20 minute nap, get up, take a five hour and head to the football field. Like that was my daily guys. And I had it down to two five hours in a Red Bull or two Red Bulls in a five hour. So when she told me that the, at the time I only saw the DFT could give me energy. I was like, sure. I'll just add that to my Red Bull, my five hour, like I'll be good to go, you know? And so she gave me a three day mini experience. It sat on my counter for two weeks. I didn't touch it. I kept saying I needed to research it. I kept looking it up. I couldn't find anything bad. It would always take me to a blog of somebody telling me their experience with it. It sat there until my daughter's mom, my daughter's friend's mom walked in the door and asked me where I got Thrive from. And I was like, how do you know about this? And she's like, my sister swears by this stuff. And so that's when I decided to go ahead and give it a try. And I was a day one thriver. I didn't follow directions. I took two capsules. I took the lifestyle mix. And I remember it was uh, after Christmas and I had taken down all the Christmas decorations before Tommy woke up and it was early. And um, he came downstairs and he was like, what is going on? And I'm not one who takes down the tree. Like I won't take off the ornaments. I won't take it apart. Like that's Tommy's job. Like that's an agreement we already know. Like it, that I didn't agree to. He didn't agree to it, but that's <laughs> that's what his job is. You know, that's his job to take down the Christmas tree, take off the ornaments, and I had done everything, including had the Christmas tree in the box. Okay, and um, I won't do that anymore. My tree was up to like mid January this year, but you know, you're a day one thriver. You feel like you can conquer the world. And so I did it all. And so um, even longer story short, because we do have a, a super long story, but even longer story short, I immediately looked at Tommy and I was like, I don't know who is making money off of this stuff. And I can tell you guys this because we're like, I'm not, I don't ever say this 
publicly, which I probably, it doesn't matter, but I'm like, I don't know who's making money off this stuff, but we need to make some money off this stuff. I was like, <laughs> I was like, somebody is making some money. I'm like, I don't know where you get it from. I don't know what it is, but we're going to make some money. And so I clicked the promoter button. Um, I was told not to, I did it anyway. I ordered a $400 pack, which was my light bill money guys. I didn't have the money to do that. Um, Tommy was a executive truck driver at the time and the winters were slow for us. So we had to be careful with our money, but we weren't careful with our money. We were irresponsible with our money. It was Christmas time. You know, everybody blows their money at Christmas time, money that they don't have and we didn't have it. And I used my light bill money and I purchased my first pack. Um, when I got the pack in, I was like, you're doing this stuff, Tommy. So, you know, got them all set up. I'm like, can't wait. He's going to love this stuff. And nothing, <laughs> nothing <laughs> like day one, nothing. Day two, nothing. Day three, nothing. Four, five, and six, seven days, nothing. I'm like, you feel it? He's like, no. I'm like, no, you're annoying me. I don't feel anything. <laughs> This stuff you feel is, it today? I'm, I'm mad you spent the right, right. Of money on. Did you uh, get it right? Yeah. You did it right. You felt nothing. Felt nothing. That's for eight so days, for eight days. And I was like, there is no way. And, and it got to a point where I was like, he is just saying he don't feel anything because he wants to make me feel bad for spending this light bill money. I'm like, oh. I was like, I'm like, no, like I'm still drinking. Like I still need a five hour mid halfway through the day, you know? Um, but it was day eight, day eight that, you know, like you said, I was a truck driver, mover, you know, working super long, hard days. You know, um, we had to carry furniture all day pretty much. So my job was very strenuous, like, and my body took a beating. And at the age of 34, Q was actually helping me get up out the bed in the morning. Like, that's how bad my ankles were. My knees were like, every morning I felt like a rusted tin man every single morning. It was like, damn, she would have to help me walk to the bathroom. You know, like I felt like an old man at the age of 34. And I was late. Ain't nobody got time for that. No. <laughs> I was late every morning. <laughs> and, and day, like day eight, I woke up and I got up out the bed by my, without even thinking, just, I just got up out the bed and I stood up on the side of the bed and she was already up, had her headphones on, ironing her, ironing her uh, scrubs. And I'm just standing there like moving around. And she just like kind of looked at me. She was like, what's wrong? I'm like, I'm like, nothing. You know, she's like, you're thriving, you're thriving. I'm <laughs> like, eh, whatever. <laughs> but I felt really, really good. Like I hadn't felt that good and I don't know how long in the morning. And I remember going, we went to work. I went to work and it was probably one of the, like one of our harder days, a 14 hour day um third floor carry up with 12,000 pounds and in our industry we every they go by weight so it was 12,000 pounds worth of household goods that had to be carried up three flights of stairs so just think about that your home packed up in boxes refrigerators you know toys bikes whatever it is you got in your house was on our truck and it had to be carried up three flights of stairs so on a day like that when I get home, I'm done. Like I'm going straight to the couch. I'm not moving. The kids know, don't even, don't even ask me to do anything. Cause I'm like, I'm just going straight to the couch. Cause I know the next morning I can probably barely walk. And I came home from work that day and without even thinking about it, I just got out the car and my boys were in the street playing basketball. And I just went over to, went over to them and just started shooting around with them, not playing, playing, but just like shooting around, just being a dad, you know, just, you know, making jokes at how they shoot the ball and just, you know, shooting the ball or whatever. And it didn't hit me until later on that night, like around 930, we were, you know, we were still wide awake. I was feeling good still 930 at night. And I was like, man, I'm like, I'm like, I didn't have not one cup of coffee today. I didn't have one five hour energy today. I worked a super hard long day. And you know, when you're thriving, like you go hard in the gym or you do whatever it is times two. So like I'm running up and down these steps, like past the guy that's with me, like way faster than him. And I'm like, man, I'm like, I'm like, yo, I feel really, really good. I'm like, this is crazy. 
And that's when it that's when it really hit me. Like, okay, we're on to something. Like this this is legit. Like I'll pay any amount of money for this feeling right here. Cause that feeling in the morning, I, I couldn't go back to feeling like that, especially after feeling how I felt that day. So, you know, and it's been, that was four, four years ago, four and a half years ago. And it's, it hasn't changed since. So like you guys that aren't day one thrivers, or if you are day one thriver, like you're lucky. Day one thrivers are lucky, but I'm glad <laughs> I, I'm glad I wasn't a day one thriver. I'm glad I was. I can, I can, sh I'm glad you were too. Cause I'm if, not I, consistent if I would have got a hold of that product first, we'd have never bought it. I'd have like, man, get this garbage out of here. I didn't take it for a week straight. I say that all the time. I'm like, I, the universe knew I needed to fill it day yep. one, because if Me I didn't fill it immediately, I would have never taken it the second day. Yeah. Like I would have, I would have just been like, well, that was cool. Yeah. Whatever. You know what I mean? Like I had to fill something in order to, to keep going. And then eventually he just, decided he was going to start taking it too because I had it you know what I mean yeah. and so yeah I totally I relate I don't think he was a day one thriver though but he takes he's tried so many different things like he's yeah. constantly looking up new and different recipes for stuff mm -hmm. and health things and so like that's just his jam so for him it probably had to take longer because yeah. he's you know he likes vitamins <laughs> and stuff <laughs> yeah so the, as far as the business side goes, um, Thrive, the ultimate, party. the ultimate back then it was called the ultimate Thrive Palooza was Thrive, called the ultimate party. It was called back the then. ultimate party. Yeah. And we got on a call with Paul and he kept saying, all roads lead to Dallas, all roads lead to Dallas. And I was like, I guess we got to go to Dallas. <laughs> like do we need to go to Dallas but yes it was called the ultimate party and even with that guys we spent like we didn't have the money to go but we went anyway so not to cut you off if you are not going to thrive palooza you need to go you are out of your mind yes I don't care if you have to sleep on a cot in somebody's room like you need to be there you need to be there yes we sat outside of a hotel waiting for Tommy's brother to transfer us money that we were borrowing for him from him so we can check into our hotel room because we did not have the money to go. And we went and we knew nothing about the business. Nobody told us we had to go. We just both were feeling so good. And we were like, let's just go. Let, like, let's do it. Um, and I, I think that's what changed it for Tommy. I think mm -hmm. that was what made it click. Yeah, you know, I remember just and uh, there's there's nothing like being in a huge room with that much positive energy and everybody you you come in contact with that's a thriver like it's like your family. Everybody's nice. It was just like it was like a whole new world because where like where I'm from like people don't even speak to you like yeah we're from Jersey. Mind, mind your like, business. Eh. Why are you talking to me? Don't talk to me. I haven't, leave me alone. Why are you asking me questions? That's, that's yeah, how. they're like, hi, how are you? Why? <laughs> <laughs> what you need? What do you want? <laughs> so like just being in that, that, that room with everybody was crazy. And, you know, it wasn't like I saw people walking across the stage younger than me. Yeah. That were like, I forgot who it was, but they were a Lavelle millionaire. And I'm like, there's no way this girl is a Lavelle millionaire from selling his products. Yeah. And then and then they called up the 200 Ks and, and then everybody was up on stage. And I'm like, yeah. And back then, I think they called up the 80. I think they too. called up the 80 Ks. So too. the 80 Ks were up there. The 200 Ks were up there. And we were like, oh, my goodness. Like, first of all, let me just say that network marketing was a scam. Like we were raised like that's a pyramid scheme. You don't do it. And so when we got to Thrive Palooza and we saw how many people were doing this, we were like, where has this been all of our life? Mm -hmm. So to go in conference, um, Emmett Smith spoke that year and Amy, Amy Purdy. Purdy yep. And for all these people to get up on the stage and they're making this money and I had to spend my light bill money, I couldn't even check into a hotel. I'm like, my life is not gonna, I work a full-time job. He works a full-time job. Like our life is not going to change if we don't go for this. Like our life is not going to change any different. 
So why not? Why not at least try? We didn't have to pay into it. We chose to pay into it because we wanted to thrive, but we weren't paying anything to share it with others. So why not just do it? Um, and I think Tommy got a lot serious, a lot more serious about the business before I did when we went to Thrive Palooza. It's funny, it's called the Ultimate Party. Um, when we did our interview, they were like, Can you stop calling it the Ultimate Party? <laughs> Can you call it Thrive Palooza? <laughs> so people know what it is. We were like, Oh, okay. My bad. <laughs> But yes, um, I think that's what made it click for him. And and we came home and we were like, this is a, this has to work for us. Like, we have to make it work. And mm -hmm. um, and it was it was at that time it was like I was an owner operator, and I was like, guys, I was always gone. Like, we moved to Georgia so I could be home more, and I ended up being gone way more than than I was in Jersey. Like, I missed everything birthdays holidays i miss my son being born i miss like just special moments in your in my kids life that i will never get back and just chasing just chasing after a dollar like trying to like trying to have a better life so when i saw that and i'm like i know what the product is i mean know what the product does i know how i feel and nobody in our area is doing this nobody in our area knows about this product yet I'm like, we about to set the whole town of Ackworth on fire with this product. And I will, I say that, but I will say it has not been all butterflies and rainbows and sunshine. It has been a lot of what the F am I doing? <laughs> like, yes. Why am I still doing this? Like, is it even worth it? Do I even want to do this anymore? Like, it, like, is it worth me, you know, just being, you know, you go through those frustration, uh, frust frustrating moments and all of that. Yeah, I want to hear about all that. Oh, the frustrating the moments? Frustrating oh, moments? I want, okay. I want the, the good, the bad, the ugly, all of it. Okay, so I'll tell you guys, when we got started in this company, and, uh, you know, a lot of people don't know this about our story. When we got started in this company, we actually started on another team. We started on another team and we weren't growing. We were hungry for the business, but we weren't feeling the culture. We also didn't know how network marketing worked. We didn't worked. know how network marketing worked. We weren't educated. We, we weren't were educated just like, at all. We were out being salesmen, just selling the product. We weren't building a business. And that's, that's where a lot of people mess up there. They, they just want to make a sale instead of building a business. And there's a huge difference. And for two years or a year and a half, we were just like pretty much winging it, making a sale. Oh, let's this person order. Oh, that person order. Oh, the, but then after that, no, like nobody was ordering again. And it got to the point to where, you know, I had already left my job and we were struggling bad, bad, bad. We were struggling really bad. And so what rank did you guys get to with that, like with that team or, or with that mindset and we working 12 that way. 12Ks when we left that team. 12Ks, okay. Yeah, we were, we were each 12K. Mm -hmm. So I was 12K, he was 12K. And um, I hate telling this story, but I'm just gonna tell it because you guys need to know. So we thought we found a loophole in this, in the whole Lavelle plan. We didn't read it. We were just told, we were told that we could move over and sign up on an LLC. That's how somebody else had did it. That's how someone else had did it. And as long as we didn't get caught for six months, that we would be good after six months, all would be fine and dandy. Right. So we come on over on the team we're on now. We're on in our LLC. We shut down our accounts on the other team and we're working our business. Everything's good. Flying through ranks. 12K, you know, VIP 800, 1600. And mind you, we didn't take our team with us. Like we, we didn't, we weren't able to. I mean, some people wanted to stay where they were and, you know, we were only a 12K team. You know, it doesn't take that much to get to 12K. So we came over, flying through ranks, hit all the bonuses, grew ourselves to a 40K team. Um, Christmas time. It was Christmas time. 
And then the very next week we hit 80K. We hit 40 to 80K in one week. Yes, we did. I don't know how we did it. People ask all the time. I'm like, I don't know. Like it just worked in the favor in the universe that way. It wasn't done like with waiting room or anything. Like we just hit 40K, hit 80K. Our story hit the fan page. And then we got letters from Lavelle. <laughs> like, hey guys, hey. Hey, you remember that hey. old account? Hey, hey, you guys. <laughs> You're not allowed to be here. You guys didn't shut down right. We are like- <laughs> We were like, that was like eight months ago. What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we actually wrote, we had earned our first getaway, Punta Cana. Um, we had already purchased our flight tickets um, and we were headed to Punta Cana on our 80K high horse. And we received letters that we had to either go back to our old team or stay where we are and not get paid for six months. And that's what we did. We stayed where we were. We worked this business for six months and we did not get paid and our team did not know. So this is the reason I like to tell this part of the story is because one, first of all, the grass is not greener on the other side, but it was the best move that we could have ever made for our life. I think if we would have stayed on our old team, we would not be with Lavelle right now. It was a right move, you know, but we worked our business every single day and did not get paid. And our team did not know we were shut down. And so, Tommy was not working. And, and to we speak to it, like to speak to that, like you guys. So I know some of you might not be where you want to be at in this business. But you still have to show up every single day like you're gonna get paid. Like it was probably the hard, it was the hardest time, not even probably, it was the hardest time in our, not not beefing back and forth with each other, but just like our relationship. It was just hard. It was just hard. We it went, was the hardest six months ever. Like we were at 80K team. It was Christmas time. It was Christmas time. And like. The very next day rank advancement bonuses dropped. Yep. After we got shut. Right after we got shut down, rank advancement bonuses came out and we were like, are you kidding me? It was hard. It was, go ahead. We spent the whole summer with no gas. Um, we went to Punta Cana anyway. Our car broke down the day before we left Punta Cana. So we had to Uber to the airport. We had to Uber home. And then we had a nerve to go out and get a new car when we got home because we were like, we need a car anyway. <laughs> but at that time, she wasn't, she wasn't a promoter. I was a customer. So she had she had officially set out six months. So we signed her up as a, um, a promoter and we just started building under her. So if you guys are kind of wondering how we hit 200K at the same time, we've been building under her, you know, for that, that six month period, we was building under her. And it was hard, but we got to her to 12K really fast, went and got a car, but it just, you know, with a six family household, a 12K income isn't gonna cut it. And I was still working my job full time. So it was a rough six months, guys. It was like, I mean, oodles and noodles for dinner, Little Caesars pizza, the $5 pizza. Every day. Like <laughs> every single day. Like my kids don't even like to go to Little Caesars anymore. <laughs> Like, don't even say the word Caesar. It was like, hard. Don't even say it. It was hard. <laughs> it was rough. Um, and we didn't tell our team, so they didn't mm -hmm. know. So, like, we couldn't run promos because we didn't have the money. We had no extra. We couldn't run promos. We couldn't give anybody money off of anything. Like, we were barely thriving ourselves. Um, it was a rough six months. I will tell you today, it was 100% worth it. It was 100% mm -hmm. worth it. Um but it was it was tough or 400 percent worth it <laughs> just gonna go ahead and say that yeah. i don't know <laughs> everybody was thinking it everybody was thinking <laughs> it. <laughs> but i think you know and the crazy part is when we when we came out of our suspension we were barely holding on to 12k in my account so we the volume dropped from 80 to barely holding on to 12 when we came out of that that was what two years ago yeah two years ago that was two years ago and we had to rebuild all over again and 
it was it was tough, but we we knew that this opportunity wasn't isn't coming back around. Like Paul says it all the time, like you might not see this for another 20 to 25 years. An opportunity like this. I know I don't have that many opportunities like this, you know, coming from where I come from. I have a felony on my record. We have, we're both just college, I mean, high school graduates. I have no special training in anything. So it's like, where can I go and make almost a half a million dollars with all of that? And I mean, keeping it real, a black man in America with a felony, you're not getting that many jobs. So where, where can I go and make a, almost a half a million dollars? This company has changed our life, y'all. Changed our life from the products to the business side. So if you think it can't happen for you, you're wrong. Yeah. I mean, I'll tell you just from like, we just got off of an opportunity Zoom and they were like, so tell us how you feel. I can't feel. <laughs> I can't. I, I don't know. I I just know how my life is going to change. I know that I'm not going to have to stand in a grocery line and worry to have to put something back. I know that I'm going to be able to pay every single bill and not have to come home to a sign on my door that my gas or my water is shut off. You know, um, I can actually send my kid who graduated last year to college now. Like these are the things that my nine to five never provided for me. And this is the reason why we did this business is because we knew that, I mean, I had a lady retire from my job. She had been there. I'm not there anymore, but I had her, reti she retired. She got a Mexican dinner and a basket full of her favorite things that we as a staff put together. She had been with the, the company over 25 years, over 25 years. There is no, if I would have stayed where I was, I would have never had the opportunity to earn $200,000, $400,000. The opportunity is not there. It's not like I wouldn't have worked hard enough. You work hard enough every day, right? Like you go to your nine to five and the person next to you, they, whether they work harder than you or not hard at all, they're gonna get paid the same. And so are you, right? I can work hard in this business and I can make a lot of money. I can slack in this business and I can make gas money. It's still a better opportunity than <laughs> your nine to five. And it just isn't, I'm not telling people to quit their jobs. I worked my job until I was in 80K. And when I left, I boohooed my eyes out because I loved my job. But I was there more than I was with my kids. I was with those people more than I was with Tommy. I went there early in the morning. I left late in the evening and I came home with a lot of stress because I had a lot of people who did not do their jobs there and I was in charge of them. You're never going to make that money in a nine to five. I would have never had the opportunities that I have now. And now I know my kids will have huge opportunities. Like Alicia knows she heard me and Tommy talking the things that we wanted to do if we ever had an opportunity like this. And of course, you know, this is just one bonus Lavelle rolled out. I'm going for every single bonus that they offer. This will not only be the only bonus I grab from Lavelle because the opportunity is there, but I'll be able to fund my kids' dreams. Like I would have never been able to do that at Piedmont or my corporate medical job. Like I would have never been able to do that. And so like, everybody's like, how do you feel? How do you feel? I don't know how to feel. Like today I just wanted to clean my house because when I tell you we did nothing running for that bonus, we did nothing. There was laundry piled up everywhere. Poor ne my son Nico today got a, a tardy letter because he was late for the sixth time because we have not done anything but worked this business like the kids have been fending for themselves we've been eating out a whole lot like there were a couple days where I didn't shower and I used to hear people tell that story and I used to be like oh yeah right Whatever. no no shit gets real when you're running for two hundred thousand dollars <laughs> but I will tell you it's a hundred percent worth it 
And Lavelle put away this money and they put it down for each and every one of you to grab. So if you're just a 4K and you're looking like, oh, must be nice, get out of that mentality and go get that money. Because they put it there for everyone. Everyone has the same opportunity that we had. It's just making the decision to go get it. You have to make that decision that you're going to go get it. And I will tell you when they dropped, I made that decision. I was like, yeah, we're going to get this money. I'm doing opportunity zooms. I'm doing all the things. And the first month month went by and I was like, shit's got to change. Something's got to change. And we just went hard helping everybody else under us hit their bonuses. And before you knew it, I looked at my tracker and I was like, I'm on track for 200. Oh my gosh, I'm on track. (laughs) And we just kept helping people and we kept digging in. And, you know, Tommy was the one that we thought was going to hit. And then one day we woke up and we were like neck and neck. And then it was like, who's going to cross the line first? (laughs) (laughs) Who around the world? Girls. (laughs) Oh. Uh, you are the worst. I yeah. love it. So I'll ask what type of, so you say, you, you know, you focused on your team, you focused on the people on your team that were running and getting them to their ranks. And then you checked yours and you were like, holy crap. Okay. We're pretty close to us hitting ours. What type of things were you doing with your teams to help promos or whatever? Like what were your, I don't know, main focuses, new promoters, new customers, oh. Well, one, we, we streamline the way we bring in people. We used to hop on an opportunity Zoom right away. We created like a private page, like a little group just for VIPs. And it just goes over like, Tommy talks about how to like, the process of hitting your VIP 800, 1600. We have a funnel that we follow. So he talks about that funnel. We talk about posting on social media in there. We talk about sampling in there and they are to get their v- their new people who come in are to watch those videos before we hop on the Zoom with them. Because a lot of times you get on those Zooms and you're telling them all this stuff. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm not like a quick thinker. So they're like, do you have questions? And I'm like, no no questions. Like they don't have time to take it in. So they watch those videos and then they're able to get on. And if they have quite a lot of the times now they have questions because they've had time to take it in. So we changed that. Um, We started, I think the biggest thing that we started that changed everybody was we started a morning huddle. It's called wake up and win. And um, everybody gets on and before they get on, they have to have their IMs and what they're grateful for, something they're grateful for from the day before. And we hop on and everybody has to, not everybody. What do you do, like four or five people? I like four or five people. I, I give them the opportunity like to, I want want them to say, say, I wanna go first. You know, I want people to, you know, put themselves out there and say, I wanna say my I am today. You know, because I like self-development, if you guys aren't doing self-development, you're losing. I'm just tell you that right now you're losing like you have to get up and do self-development so you know getting up and saying your ims or, or writing down your ims is so important so you know i let whoever whoever wants to go first let them go but if they if nobody raised their hand i start calling people out like we are on wake up and win we're going to start we're going to do it and people get on you know and you know just they hear themselves talk about themselves i am this i am that and it's funny because the girl today, she said, when we first started doing these huddles, she said, I actually had to go get a pack of IMDFTs to do my IMs. Like, I want you to think about that. She had to go get a pack of IMDFTs for her to start doing her IMs. Like, oh, I am determined. Yeah, I, yeah. I think I, she I, said I can, she would I can read write them that. and be like, oh, oh, that sounds like me. That sounds like me. <laughs> oh, that sounds like me. And We've been doing it probably what? We, we started months? it in January, but everybody started getting on after rank advancement bonus dropped. Yeah. Like, and, you know, people started, they started, you know, doing their IMs and their wake up and wins. And, you know, we actually, I think the culture changed a lot. That's what happened. Team. The culture changed a lot. And, everybody started, you know, locking in with each other because our, our team huddle in the morning is, is crazy. You know, we get on, play music, like we get set for the day because, you know, going out here dealing with the crazy people, 
you got to you got to be ready. You got to be ready. So, you know, I think that's that's what really changed everything was that we got everybody locked in together. Like we're moving as a actual team now. And they started cheering each other on. Started cheering each other on. Like your goals is just as important as mine. And that changed a lot for us. Yeah. And then as far as focusing on them, we just, we just kept encouraging them on those huddles. And then like we always talk about a different subject on those huddles. So a lot of the times when you're working with someone every day, you can tell when they're struggling with something. And so it gave us that opportunity to get personal with them. Um, And personally, like it made them more comfortable to personally reach out when they're going through something to where you ever have those people on your, on your team, all of a sudden they get quiet and they disappear. Like we have less of that. They're more or less coming to us when they're you know, battling with something rather than to get quiet, disappear. And before you know it, two weeks have gone by and they missed two weeks of running for that bonus. And so right now we have what, as of last night, 45. We have almost, probably almost 50. Rank rank advancement bonus earners on our team. From me down. From Tommy down. I mean, that makes sense. You just both hit 200K. So like that makes, that makes sense because in order for you guys to hit that, other people have to be winning yeah so I love that that this was awesome this was everything I needed um I don't know if anybody has any questions or if there's anything else that you guys wanted to share that you feel on your hearts I don't I didn't see any questions in the chat but it is blowing up people are obsessed (laughs) um do you have anything um I just want to say that if you have looked, it, it's the last month of rank advancement fourth bonus, quarter. right? It's the last month. If, this is you, it. if you are looking at, first of all, stop looking at your tracker. Just stop. Stop looking at your tracker and start sharing your Thrive experience. If you don't share your Thrive experience live, share your Thrive experience live. It's huge. Like I always say someone in your timeline is the old you right? Someone in the grocery store is the old you. And if you're not sharing what this product is doing for you, if you're just posting pictures, pictures have nothing to do with personal connection. And when you're going live, you're making that personal connection. I will tell you every single time I go live, someone messages me, someone messages me. And um, some people don't know, they don't realize that Thrive is not just weight loss. You know, a lot of thrive off of those before and after so when you go live and you're sharing your story and you're saying all of the things that thrive has done for you because I will tell you for me it was a confidence thing over weight loss like I started for energy and it wasn't until I started that I realized that I needed change it wasn't until I started that I realized how I didn't have any self-love and confidence anymore and I didn't know it Like, you know, Tommy and I would go to the mall and I would leave the mall crying because I couldn't find anything to wear. I hated being invited out. I was never in the pictures with my kids. I didn't want to get in the picture. And I would hate when I'd be taking a picture of them and somebody goes, get in, I'll take it. That (laughs) shit used to eat me up because I had no confidence. And so when I get on live and I talk about that, there are other women who feel the same way. You put yourself on the back burner and you lose yourself. So if you're not sharing your Thrive experience live, you need to, because someone needs to hear your story. You just never know whose life you're going to change. And so I wanted to say that. And I also want to say that if you've already given up on going for these bonuses, you are sadly mistaken. I talked to two people two days after I hit No, a day after we hit, after I hit um, the bonus, I had someone reach out to me and ask me to do their team Zoom. And I got on and I found out that they were $40,000 away from 200K. And they hit, they hit 200K last night. Like I kept messaging them like, where you at? Where you at? Where you at? They hit. Magic happens in this business when you believe. If you have it in the back of your head, like, oh, I know I'm not going to hit it, but I'll just settle and go for 4K. I'll just go for 12K. It's That's what you're going to get. But if yeah. you say, you know what? I'm going all in and I'm going to hit 40K, 80K, 200K. You will hit it. Like the universe has an amazing way with connecting with your subconscious mind. And you may think I'm crazy about that, but you're talking to someone who hit 40K, wrote it on her mirror that she was going to hit 80K the very next week and she hit 80K. 
I had on my Mira in the beginning of March that I was going to hit on March 28th, guys. I hit 200K on March 28th. I wrote that crap down on my Mira in April. I mean, I'm in February. On February 28th, I wrote that down. So if you think you can't go get some of this money, you are sadly mistaken. Get with your leader, get with someone, lock arms with someone and talk about how you're going to go get it. All of you deserve it. All of you deserve this money. Don't settle. Don't just go, don't just settle. Go get it. Yep. Because a, a month or two from now, you're going to be like, damn. Yeah. It went harder. Yeah. I looked at my chart. I have a, it, it, it sucked. It sucked so bad. It popped up on memories. But two years ago, when they had rank advancement out, and it was like, the, it was half. Yeah, I was 91. We, suspended on. we were suspended. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that's the one. Okay. That's so the one. I was 91% to 80K with a $40,000 bonus. I did not hit it. Mm. 91%. And that was like just days before the month was up. I could have done it. If I had the mindset that I have now, I could have done it. But I did not have, I was not this Alicia then two years ago at all. So it was just, it it was it was really bittersweet to look at because it was like man have i grown in the last two years but it was like sis you could have forty thousand dollars what's wrong with you like what is wrong with you um but i did have somebody did ask a question um about like recruiting so do you guys how, how do you guys do that how do you guys bring new people on what are do you have any tips thank you jennifer do you have any tips um as far as getting new promoters um, and and recruiting people, so we I will say we never go at this from trying to recruit people. Gotcha. Yeah, for us it's more customers. Our customers flip promoter. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's how I am. Um, I, I never have any advice for recruiting, so that's why. Like, uh, like if anybody uh, else like, has any, that'd be great because I just. If I you just can get share. someone on Thrive and they're loving the experience and you can show them the how easy it is to thrive for free, mm -hmm. some of those people are our best promoters. Yes. Um, I think, I, I can't even think of someone who has come in strictly for the business. Um, cause to I me, can, and they, yeah. didn't, and they didn't last. Oh, there you go. Because if they join, if, <laughs> I'm serious. Like, if you think about it, most of you are, even though, though you might struggle in your business at times, you're still around because you know the product works. Yep. For somebody that's not interested in the product and just knows, they just see like, oh, this is a really good opportunity. When it gets tough, they're going to leave. Because they don't even care about the products. Like, it all start like Paul and Jason are freaking geniuses, like making it about people, helping people thrive, helping people live the life they deserve as a customer, not as a promoter, as a customer, helping people thrive in life. Everything changes when you feel good. Everything changes your attitude, the way you deal with people, the way you deal with your kids, the way you react to things that's getting on your nerves. Everything changes when you feel good. So if you can make that, if you can make that happen for somebody, they will be gung ho about promoting this to their family and friends. Yeah. So we never go at it like, oh, I'm going to recruit people today. Like I don't, if somebody asks me about the business side, I turn the conversation to the products. I'm like, have you, have you tried Thrive yet? They're like, nah, I just seen you, you and your wife, y'all killing it. I'm like, oh, well, you should definitely try the products out. You have to think, um, I always say that Lavelle is super special because the products work. Um, I feel like in other companies and I no, no particular one, like other companies that their product doesn't work, they become salespeople first. So they get really good at selling, and but marketing. their product doesn't work. And so for us, it's easy because our product works and people fall in love with our product and they start promoting before they even become a promoter. And then that turns into that it turns them to the business because they feel so good because they have people asking them 
why what's so different what's working for them like that's how we don't have to cold message is because people are coming to us like what are you doing like you're different oh you look good you know they're like oh you've lost weight oh you're so much nicer now you know like <laughs> i mean has anybody really said that to you yeah <laughs> oh my god that's fantastic at work <laughs> yeah that is awesome yeah I had a very hot head working the front, try working the front desk as a doctor at a doctor's office. You know, people oh, are was. not- That's nice actually people. where I was at when I started my- Oh yeah, so you know. And so when, yeah. before I was thriving, like I would go back and forth with a, a patient coming in, being rude. I'd be like, you don't have to be rude to me. Like I would like go back and forth with them. And then when I started thriving, I knew, I learned how to like take a breath and be like, I get it. You're nervous. It's okay. You know, bless your heart. Like, okay, we're going to fix it for you. But before that, I mean, I'll never forget the first person. It was a man. He got so rude with me and I got rude back and my manager came and tapped me on the shoulder. And she was like, you can't talk to the patients like that. She was like, <laughs> and I was like on the press gainy, like we had surveys and I was all over that survey all the time because I didn't let people talk to me any kind of way. And after I became a thriver, I, knew, I learned how to take a breath. I was like, okay, we're, we'll figure it out. It's okay. It's okay. You're just upset. Like, you know, so yeah, I did. I had people tell me that I was much nicer and I ended up falling in love with my patients because of Thrive. Like, yeah. Yeah. That's pretty okay. fantastic. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. <laughs> I, when I worked at the doctor's office, I started thriving and working at the doctor's office at the same time. So they only knew oh. me as a brand new Thriver. Yeah. So like I got notes and presence and stuff like that because I was such a delight yeah <laughs> that was my second half of the job <laughs> no, I started out with that I went in there thriving I was a, I was like what Tommy said when you're a day one thriver you think you're like you know you're on top of the world and I was I was so nice all the time over <laughs> over the top nice it was mm -hmm. kind of cringy not gonna lie <laughs> so I saw but, someone said how do you hold on uh, okay. That might have been the other question, but I don't know. I get a lot of out and they love them, but never order. So I mean, that's that's you're gonna go through, so you're gonna go through that, like you that. know. But I can tell you what that sample that you did give out it was a seed. Yep. Because if they love the product, they just haven't had that moment where they're like, okay, something's got to change. So don't give up on people. I've had people use it, take a sample and just come back two years later. I'm like, okay, I'm ready. You never know yeah, what's going on I've in that too. life. You know what I'm saying? They might be embarrassed that they can't even afford the capsules, let alone the whole thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So don't take it personal. Um, still build the relationship with that person. Still follow up with them. Not about Thrive. If they go like build the relationship saying, hey, good morning. Like, I'll just say good morning to them. Hope you have a great day. You know, they'll keep that relationship there so that when it is their time, they're going to come back to you. They're always watching. They're always watching. Unless they delete you. Yeah. <laughs> Unless and, they delete you. And then you. that's on them. Man. I, don't know, I, don't know, I can't fix that one. <laughs> Even after they delete you, they still come back every now and then and check it out. Don't let them lie to you. Oh, yeah. They're definitely Facebook stalking you. <laughs> that's fantastic. Oh. I see uh, Haley say I need runners to pour into. So, oh, can I can I talk about that really really quick? Absolutely. I would have Zoom. I'm sorry. I'll let you go second. <laughs> <Not yet>. Um, <laughs> I would have these Zooms, and I would get so frustrated. I mean, God bless oh, Tommy. He yes. deals with me. I would get so frustrated, and I would have the Sunday night Zooms. Alicia, you were on my Sunday night Zoom, and people wouldn't show up. And I was like, it is so embarrassing to invite these 200Ks on, and nobody shows up for them. I'm going to start inviting sister teams. Our team doesn't appreciate it. I'm just, and then I was like, I'm going to quit. I'm not doing them anymore. And I had decided in the beginning of the year, I wasn't going to do them anymore. I think that was before you, Alicia. That was the one right before her. That was the one right before you. So you were set up to be the last one. I, I, I forgot all about that. You were set up to be the last one and you came on and I started getting so many messages after you. And I looked at Tommy and I said, oh, I can't stop. They, they need this. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, I will say, like, if you want runners to pour into, you have to show up even when they don't. 
Yep. Show yeah. up even when they don't. And the more you showed up and the more the word spreads and they start seeing those people who show up grow. Yep. It like, it's a domino effect. More people get on and more people want to, to plug in and then more people start to run. And I think that was a huge shift for us. Like those morning huddles that we have. I could pro I started recording them in the beginning. I could probably send you guys one. Um, I recorded them in the beginning and there were like four or five people on. And then those four or five people started raving about them and it just grew and the team started bonding. And then it was like, became a sense of FOMO because people were getting on and they were getting off and they were like, oh my God, that was so good. I feel so good today. And then we get on and we celebrate all the wins, whether it be VIP 800 or, you know, getting a new customer and people like just started plugging in more and more and more and the culture of our team changed. And so if you need runners, you need people to show up, you show up for them and they'll start showing up. Mm -hmm. Like you have to show up first. You have to be the example. I have people always come to me like, I don't have anybody. No one's following me. Nobody's doing this. And I'm like, are you showing up every day? Are you being consistent with showing up every single day? Ask yourself that. Like, am I showing up every day? Because if you're showing up, sometimes they're just going to show up sometimes too. So that's my piece on that because I was the one that was like, nobody gets on, nobody appreciates anything that I do. And then I was like, you know, Tommy was like, you have to do it anyway. And I just kept doing it and kept doing it and kept doing it and it grew. And now everybody shows up. Yep. You got to think about it. And the, the, if one person shows up to your Zoom, you show up like there's a hundred people on that Zoom. Because that one person could be the one person that changes your, your whole business. So if you're going to half-ass it just because it's one person, like you're doing yourself a disservice. Mm -hmm. You got to, if nobody shows up on a Zoom, do the damn Zoom by yourself. Practice. Yeah. <laughs> Practice. Yeah. Like, and record it and send yeah. it out to your team later and they can watch it at their convenience or whatever and get them to the point where they're like, oh, well, maybe I want to see this fire in person, you know? Yes gotta show up gotta show up love it love it so much this was great i don't know if there were any more questions sorry i zoned out let's see oh, she said her questions are being answered great yay <laughs> that is just proof right there that like there's so much duplication in this business there's so many things that you know we obviously just learn because we become one big old community with mm -hmm. sister legs and all these uplines and just all the different things. So like this business, it's just, we validate each other without even meaning to yep. like you guys just said some of the same things that I've said before, or that Jennifer has said, or Nicole or Courtney or whoever. And it's just, I know you're talking, I'm talking my mouth is moving. My mouth is moving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's like, mommy, but my mouth is moving. Um, it's just validation, which just goes to show that when you get people in three-way chats and on three-way Zooms or welcome calls or whatever, how important validation is because you guys are hearing Tommy and Q say things that you're prob you probably heard from your upline, et cetera, et cetera. Just imagine what that would do for a customer who's hearing from someone else something that you've already told them. And they're like, oh, well, she told me that, but I didn't really believe her. But now that you've said it, I guess I'll go ahead and buy the three steps now. Connecting is huge. I always say that I compare it to like your kids, right? You have your kids, they're jumping all over the couch. You're telling them to get down. They don't. And then grandma shows up and yeah. she sits down and they get right down. And it's like, that's what I compare. Oh, I always compare my three ways to that because you can tell someone till you're blue in the face. It's that third party validation that changes everything. Mm -hmm. I love yeah. you too, Angie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but I tell like kind of kind of piggybacking off of that is I like I tell our team all the time is like become a professional connector. Become a professional connector. Get yourself out of the way in every situation. Get out of the way. Oh, connect them to the Lavelle website. Connect them to the fan page if you use that. Connect them to a customer group if you use that. Connect like get yourself out of the way. Learn each other's stories connect to each other, connect to the upline. Because the whatever you do from the time somebody joins you as a customer or the first, the first time you reach out to somebody, 
is when duplication starts. How you reach out to somebody, if they decide to join the business, is how they're going to start reaching out to people. Yep. The duplication starts from the first time you reach out to somebody. And you have to become a professional connector. How you connect them to the team, how you connect them to the group is everything is going to duplicate, whether it's good or bad, because bad duplicates too. Faster. Yes. <laughs> Always be a student. Always be a student. I do want to say that. Always yeah. be a student. I learned from everybody in Lavelle. Everybody. There is no right or wrong way. Um, I mean, yes, there is, but there is. <laughs> Hashtag no cold messaging. Yeah. Hashtag no cold, no cold messaging. messaging. Hashtag always be a student. Yes. Like, so there's uh, a right and wrong way, but just. Yeah. And I will say like, guys. Keep popping on Zooms and you'll only know the right way. I'm just saying. Yes. I'm just saying. Yes. Plug in, I'm, plug in. I'm a student of the profession. Yes. Not just from Lavelle. I'm a student yeah. of the profession. Like there is so much knowledge on YouTube from top leaders in the network marketing industry. Be a student are, of the profession. Yeah, we are definitely really big on that in Thrive Army. Really big. Love that. Well, all right. I think that you guys answered everything. Somebody said, why am I clapping? Yes, this was recorded. So the recording will be on the uh, YouTube channel and we'll get that sent out to you guys. Um, but thank you guys again so, so much. I know that your brains are probably mush. Like, mush. Much. Yeah. Thank you for having us on. Like, I love you guys. I will have you, I would have you on every single Zoom. I could just talk to you all, all night. Everybody's going to start like slowly hopping off. We'll still be here just talking. Like I'm totally okay with that. Um, <laughs> But that's why I love this business. That's why I love this company because you grow to just become just family with so many different people, people that you would have never met in any other life. <laughs> um, so I just, I love this so much. And I am so grateful for you guys hopping on here and sharing your stories with everyone um, and your golden nuggets. I really, I think that this helped out a lot of people and it couldn't have been at a better time. The first of April, April is winning for everyone, right? Everybody's yeah. winning this month. And go to Palooza. Yes. Anyway, and Tommy and you are gonna go from 50 rank advancements to a hundred rank advancements on their team. They're just gonna double everything they did last month. <laughs> just gonna double everything. So I'm speaking it into existence. It's in the universe now, it's gonna happen. Um, so I love you guys so much. Thank you guys for hopping on everyone. Um, also, thank you for staying on. <laughs> while we were on for like half an hour before they joined us um because of my mistake um <laughs> i do that sometimes but love you y'all have a great night get have back night, to girl. work claim those bonuses spend that money before you even earn it we talked about this today um attach that money to big real life situations and you will not want to lose it i promise so y'all yeah. have a great night thank Bye you so guys. much for hopping on i'll see y'all later <laughs>